Hello, this is Michael Paul with the New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I'd like to do a video today that looks at a problem I've seen developing in masonry over the last half a dozen or so years. I believe that it ultimately stems from a problem that we have that is related to balance, as well as our ability to deal with and understand the nature of facts. This would include how we write our history, how we go about defending what we believe to be Masonic facts, and what we're willing to accept as proper procedure. I believe that we are going through something of a pendulum effect. Let me explain. There is an old thought that masonry, as well as all of society, moves in cycles. In other words, what we are doing today repeats what has been done in the past. It is sometimes questioned if this cycle is natural and will occur regardless of our actions, or if it is helped along by actions that we take. If we look at published Masonic history from, say, about 100 to 150 years ago, we can find an almost cavalier attitude towards proving anything that was published in Masonic books. I've seen Masonic books which boldly state that Freemasonry clearly traces itself back to King Solomon. Today, we recognize the Masonic lessons involving Solomon as simply a made-up story created in order to deliver moral teachings. But without any attempt at proving its claim, some books have flatly stated that this story is fact. In far too many cases, if an author believed or thought something, then it was published as if it was a well-established fact. Over the years, Masonry began facing credibility problems when many of the things that were published were shown to be nonsense. A change in how we determined our facts and historical accounts was demanded. I well remember a campaign to dispel one particular unsubstantiated Masonic claim. Over the years, many lists of famous Masons have been published. Some names, like our first U.S. President, George Washington, are rather easy to verify. There exist a number of records that clearly establish President Washington's Masonic membership. However, other names could not so easily be verified. One name that often showed up on lists of famous Masons was our third president, Jeff Thomas Jefferson. Unlike Washington, Jefferson's Masonic membership was not nearly as easy to verify. In fact, not a scrap of concrete evidence exists to prove that Jefferson was a Mason. The only evidence that existed are a second-hand reports that Jefferson associated with known Freemasons. This lack of solid evidence frustrated many to the point that they began an information campaign to convince Masons that Jefferson was not a Freemason. By the 1980s and 90s, there was a clear movement within Masonic researchers and historians to establish a new and responsible practice when writing Masonic history. It was a very simple concept. If you say or write something, you prove that it's a fact. You and you alone are responsible for what you write or say. The burden was placed squarely on the shoulders of the writers to support what they proclaimed to be fact. Failure to support what one wrote would result in the author being discredited. But over the last half a dozen or so years, there seems to be a shift back to old practices. Some authors have even published brash and astonishing challenges that should anyone not believe what they write, then the reader should go out and find proof that the author is wrong. Instead of reading something where the author clearly shows how and why their case is made, the reader is given the choice of either accepting what is offered as fact or accepting the burden and work required to prove that something is not correct. This is a backwards, unprofessional, and lazy practice for any Masonic historian to adopt. But this is what I meant by the pendulum effect. Let's look at a pendulum. It's usually made up of a frame supporting a steel ball suspended by string. Untouched, the ball hangs in balance. But if you pull the ball out of balance and release it, it doesn't go back into balance, but swings to the completely opposite side from where you were holding it. Eventually, the ball will return back to balance but only after numerous swings where it winds itself down. Let's look at this and apply it 
to what seems to be happening with how we establish facts. The actions of Masonic historians 100 to 150 years ago can be likened to pulling the steel ball of the pendulum far to one side and then releasing it. Basically, whatever someone thought or believed was published as if it was an established fact. This was especially true if they held any high rank in masonry. After many years and justified loss of credibility, Masonic historians became fed up with this lack of credibility and accountability. They demanded a change in how we established and defined a fact. But look at the case of Thomas Jefferson. How was it handled? The campaign to promote the idea that he was not a Mason was the equivalent of the pendulum going completely in the opposite direction. It's true that no evidence exists to prove that Jefferson was a Mason, but this doesn't mean that it has proven that he was not a Mason. It only proves that no evidence exists. Factually, all that we can say is that we don't have proof that he was a Mason. We cannot prove that he was or was not a Mason. That's the meaning of not having proof. A responsible historian will simply say that some have made the claim that Jefferson was a Freemason, but to date, it's an unsubstantiated claim. That's all we can say. We can't prove it one way or the other. A pendulum swinging obeys the laws of physics. To some degree, so does society, and masonry follows the lead of society. The difference is, as human beings, we have the ability to make a choice. We have free will. Just because we may be inclined to do something, or just because everyone else is doing something, it does not require us to do the same thing. We have the ability to use our own mind and figure out a problem through reason. It's not a difficult concept to support whatever we write. As a reader, it's far more desirable and far less problematic if when we read something to have the author provide the evidence to support what they are saying. If I read a book titled The History of the Grand Lodge of ABC, and in it, it states that John Smith was made a Mason in 1840 and offers nothing to support that claim. That's all I have. I have a secondary source telling me something that it doesn't prove. If I in turn publish a paper or a book making the as fact statement that John Smith was made a Mason in 1840, then I am little more than a rumor mill, an irresponsible peddler of gossip. We do not publish things as fact unless we can ourselves prove that it is a fact. A secondary source, if nothing else is available, is not worthless, but it must be clearly identified as a secondary source and not a proven fact. An unproven secondary source can never be accepted or written of as a fact. But if I write that John Smith was made a Mason in 1840 and then provide a photographic reproduction of his Master Mason certificate or the exact location where that certificate exists, then the reader is relieved of the burden and question of if I am telling the truth or not. I will have proven what I have stated. It is not only responsible, but establishes credibility. Without it, then it is reasonable that everything stated by me should be discounted as nonsense. We are the ones who make our own credibility, or lack of it. Balance, or reputation, is not something that just exists. It is something that we must work to obtain. We must not allow ourselves to swing too far in either direction. We must not allow ourselves to be swayed by emotion, opinions, or ego. If we write something and state it as a fact, then it is our burden to support what we have written so that the reader can easily establish what we have said as a fact, and it is proven to be such. If we assume the role of a teacher, or one who is educating another, then we assume the responsibility of doing it correctly. Anything less does not serve masonry. 
and only serves to expose us as an out-of-balance system justifiably lacking any credibility. Masonry deserves much more. If we say or write something, then we are the ones who must prove it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been of some value. If you like the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. See you next time.